Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Ray Kemper, Johnny. Oh, hello, Mr. Kemper. Are you available? Oh, very much so. We insured a Mrs. William Post, New York City. She was killed last night. Yeah, how? Murdered. A private detective named Paul Sachs and a lawyer named George Simon found her in her apartment. She'd been stabbed to death. Any suspects? Yeah, her husband, William Post. Lieutenant Roseman of the 5th Precinct is handling the case. Contact him. He expects you. Okay, I can leave in an hour. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. For refreshing taste, plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. When your mouth and throat feel hot and dry, a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you quick, long-lasting refreshment. The lively, full-bodied Spearmint flavor cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The chewing itself helps keep your throat pleasantly moist. Best of all, you can chew and enjoy refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum almost any time and any place. Keep a package handy right in your purse or pocket so you can chew a stick whenever you want it. For refreshing taste plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Millions enjoy it, and you will too. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Columbia Risk Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the William Post matter. Expense account item one, $18.90. Train fare and incidentals between Hartford and New York City. I arrived in the afternoon, registered at the hotel and rented a car, which I drove to the 5th Precinct Police Station, where I met Lieutenant Roseman, an old friend. I haven't seen you in a long time, Johnny. How's it going? Oh, can't complain. You're a lieutenant now. Yeah, getting up in the world. Hmm. Well, how about filling me in on this post killing? Sure. A woman's name is Teresa Post. Married to William Post, banker. She was found last night in her apartment, stabbed four times. Gag shoved in the mouth, apartment robbed. A private detective named Sachs found her, huh? Uh-huh. And uh, Mrs. Post's lawyer. George Simon. Right. They both arrived at the apartment about the same time. Both had appointments with the victim. They got worried when she didn't show up. Found the janitor and he opened the apartment for them. They discovered her lying on the floor in the bedroom. What was missing? According to her husband, all her jewels, about $15,000 worth. Also a cloth coat. My boss said you were considering the husband. Yeah. Three days ago, they had an argument and separated the wife was filing for a divorce. She'd suspected Post playing around for some time, so she hired Sachs, a private detective. Sachs got the evidence, and she confronted her husband with it. He moved out and into a hotel. Sachs and the lawyer were supposed to meet her at 8 o'clock so that Sachs could turn over the evidence on her husband to the lawyer. Well, what makes you think it's the husband? Well, robbery looks phony. The jewel's okay, but the coat, the cloth coat, the only item of clothing that was stolen... Yeah? There was a full-length mink and a stole left in the closet. Oh, mm-hmm. The husband got an alibi? Sure. The woman he was seeing. The one who busted up the marriage. Oh, who is she? Well, the name of Hughes. Jane Hughes. Lives at 109 West 61st Street. And she claims Post was with her at the time of the murder? The victim had been dead about three hours, killed around five in the afternoon. The Hughes woman swears Post was with her all afternoon from about one... Till late that evening. How'd the killer get into the apartment? That's another thing that makes me suspect the husband. No evidence that shows the killer broke in. No way he could get in a window. The apartment's on the eighth floor, and a fire escapes at the end of the hall. Well, I'd like to talk to the people involved. Oh, sure, Johnny. Who do you want to start with? The man who found the body. From Sachs and Simon. I'll take Sachs first. <laughs> Roseman gave me the address of the private detective. 
and I drove over to 52nd Street where I located my man. Paul Sachs was small with a sour look and a wet handshake. What can I do for you, boy? I'm investigating the Post murder. Uh-huh. That's, uh, well, well, well. Insurance man, huh? That's right. She insured for much? I forgot to ask. Yeah, probably is. Old man's loaded, boy. When did Mrs. Post retain you? Oh, about a month ago. Well, the fifth, to be exact. Wasn't too hard. The old man was pretty open about it. He was careful, all right, you know. Stayed to the more discreet places, but uh, he was... Well, you know how those fellas are. Last one to think someone's checking up, so they aren't as careful as they should be. Want a drink? Uh, no, thanks. I was lucky. Lucky? Yeah. Paid me up in full before the old man cut her up. Sure you don't want a little belt? Uh, no, it's um, a little early. Uh, don't blame the old boy much, though. How's that? I mean, a little bit of fluff he was chasing around with. Mighty nice. Oh, yes, sir. Mighty nice. Yeah, I got a couple of pictures here. Cops have got duplicates. I uh, keep these for the family album. <laughs> uh, you think Post killed his wife? Oh, yeah, sure. He certainly had the motive. Threw him out and was going to take him for everything. I've been in on things like this, boy. You know, a man like me gets mixed up in all kinds of things. Murders like this, cut and dried. I'll tell you what. He made his mistake by taking that coat and leaving the mink. Stupid mistake. Real stupid, boy. The police say she was killed around five in the afternoon. Yeah, that's right. Well, she was cut up something off. Where were you at five, Mr. Sachs? Uh, me? Oh, nothing personal. <laughs> You're barking up the wrong private detective, boy. I didn't have no motive. I was right here in my office. Didn't finish work till around six. Yeah, I've got other cases, you know. Can you prove you were in your office? Can I prove... Well, boy, if I got to prove it, I'll prove it. But there ain't no motive, boy. Why would I want to kill her, huh? You ain't thinking, boy. When you've been investigating as long as I have, you won't run around asking ridiculous questions like that. Yeah, I should be ashamed of myself. Well, Mr. Sachs, it's been a real pleasure. You got to go, boy? Yeah, I'm afraid so, but it's been charming. Good. You need any help? Just give me a call. Oh, I'll do that, boy. <laughs> My next stop was the office of Mr. George Simon, attorney at law. The surroundings were a little different from Sachs's private pig pen. A big suite of offices with a big suite of secretaries. George Simon greeted me with a professional smile and offered me an overstuffed chair. Yes, I arrived at Mrs. Post's around five minutes to eight. My appointment was at eight sharp. When did Sachs arrive? He was already there, waiting in the hall. He said he'd just come up in the elevator but that Mrs. Post had not answered his ring. Lovely fellow. You met him? Yes, a few minutes ago. Well, we waited in the hall, thinking that Mrs. Post was late and due to arrive at any minute. Ten or fifteen minutes later, I got worried. I knew how important the meeting was, and I couldn't understand why she'd forget it. I had talked to her that afternoon. What time? Th that I talked to her? Oh, I'd say around three. She seemed uh, all right? Well, she wasn't particularly happy about the situation... They'd been married for seven years. But other than that, nothing else seemed to be bothering her? If it was, she didn't mention it. All right, you waited for about five or ten minutes. Uh, yes, yes. Then I, then I located the janitor and had him unlock the door. We found Mrs. Post in the bedroom. I called the police immediately. Did Mr. Post know that you were meeting with his wife? I have no way of knowing that. Do you think he killed her? No, I don't think he's the type to kill anyone. Mrs. Post was certainly going to get a sizable settlement. She was going to ask for one. And Mr. Post knew that she was. I believe she told him. She mentioned to me that she had. Uh, how large a settlement? We hadn't arrived at any figure. I was supposed to meet her and this private detective. I was supposed to look over the evidence, and then we were to discuss future plans. Uh, where were you at five o'clock, Mr. Simon? Here in my office. I was here all day except for lunch. All right, sir. Thank you very much for your trouble. Glad to help. But I don't think Mr. Post killed his wife. Well, I can't disagree with you. You don't think he did? I can't agree with you either. You see, uh, I just don't know yet. See you later, Mr. Simon. The next person on my list was Miss Jane Hughes. 
the reason for the marital rift between William Post and his wife. She lived on the seventh floor of an attractive apartment house on West 61st Street. And when she opened the door for me, I could understand how any man might stray a little that Jane Hughes smiled at him once too many times. Hello. Can I come in? You might, if I knew who you were, what you wanted. The name is Johnny Dollar. What do you want, Johnny? Just a little talk. Any special subject? William Post. Goodbye, Johnny. And uh, Mrs. William Post. Didn't you hear me, Johnny? I'm an insurance investigator. Oh? Lieutenant Roseman thought I should talk to you. I thought you were a reporter. Well, now can I come in? Just put one foot in front of the other. Well, thanks. I'll try it. I didn't mean to be rude, but you understand about reporters. Oh, you weren't rude. Have a seat. Thanks. Why are you investigating me, John? Oh, routine. That's all routine. I'm just going to tell you the same thing I told the police. All right. Bill, Mr. Post, was with me most of the afternoon. How long have you known Mr. Post? About six months. We're just good friends. Yeah, I know. It's not like that at all, Mr. Dollar. We're just good friends. Okay. Oh, that's a shame. I'm afraid you'll have to leave. Mr. Post? Would you mind going out the back way? Well, I've got to talk to him sooner or later. Make it later, huh? Well, generally, I'm a gentleman, but... But uh, this time, you'll make an exception. Might prove interesting. All right. Why don't you answer it? Sure. Sure. Mr. Post? Who are you? Johnny Dollar. What are you doing here? Bill. Yes? Mr. Dollar's an insurance man. Insurance? I'm with Columbia or Risk. Oh, uh, don't close the door. He wants to talk to you. At my office, Mr. Dollar. Goodbye. That's the way you want it, Mr. Post? Exactly. Now get out of here. You've got no business Mr. here. Mr. Post. Get out. <laughs> Friends, no matter what kind of work you do, it's a real help to chew delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum right while you're working. When you're warm or tired, for instance, the lively, full-bodied spearmint flavor is really refreshing. It helps keep your mouth and throat feeling cool and moist. Chewing on that smooth, good-tasting piece of Wrigley Spearmint makes the time pass more pleasantly, too. It seems to make your work go smoother and easier. Keep a package or two of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy all the time. Enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working and at other times. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. On the police list, William Post was the number one candidate for the killing of his wife. On my list, he was just a wealthy banker with a dead wife, a seductive girlfriend, and a nasty personality. I'd run into many a nasty personality in my travels, so I let the incident roll off my back and drove over to the Park Avenue apartment where Mrs. Post had been murdered. In the basement, I located the janitor, a bent little man who was working on the plumbing and singing a flat chorus of Dixie. Hey, Pop. 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 Are you the janitor? What's your name? It's Pete. You want to do me a favor, Pete? Pete Kellett. Who are you? My name is Johnny. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurry! Hurry! Johnny comes hey, Pete, home Pete. Again. Hey, Pete. Hey, Pete. Pete, I want you to do something for me. Yes. I don't know you. I'm an insurance investigator. Yes. You got a pass key to number eight? Well, have you? Number eight? 
where the woman was murdered. Oh, I'm busy. When Jenny can come in, she again. Pete, Pete, oh, oh Pete, Pete. Hey, Pete. <sighs> Pete, I want you to let me into number eight. What for? Because I'm investigating Mrs. Post's murder. Can't. It's all right. I'm working with the police. Who'd you say he was? My name is Dollar. You said it was Johnny. That goes in front. It's Johnny Dollar. Oh, Johnny, that's a funny name. When Johnny comes to my kitchen home again, Henry. Ain't nothing for you to see in number eight. I just want to look over the place. Why? I just want to take a look around. I don't want to go up there. Well, then give me the key. I can't. I got ten dollars that says you can. Make it 20 and I'll let you look over number three. Folks are out of town for a couple of months. I just want to get into number eight. Okay. Oh, thanks. You opened the door last night for Mr. Sachs and Mr. Simon, didn't you? Who? How long have you worked here? Oh, I don't know. I guess I worked here. Oh, let me see now. Oh, my. I just worked here. Oh, for just a long time, I guess. That's all. You uh, knew Mrs. Post? Yes, yes, I knew have you ever seen Mr. Sachs or Mr. Simon before last night? Uh, who? The men you let into Mrs. Post's apartment. I saw him last night. I never saw him before. Not even once I never saw him. Oh, I didn't like that one of them. Oh, he, that one with that squinted face. He squinted it all up and he had those dirty teeth. Sachs. Who? The one that squinted his face all up. Oh, I didn't like him. Well, thanks, yeah, Pete. I didn't like Mrs. Post either. Why not? I just didn't like her. She, sweet, oh, sweet cherry, come to carry me home. I let myself into number eight and took a good look over the whole place. There was still blood on the bedroom floor, but everything else had been cleaned up, and there was nothing that gave me any ideas. The mink coat and stole were still in the closet. I went back downstairs to give Pete his keys, but the funny little man wasn't around. I left the keys on a bench near the furnace, went back out to my car, and drove to the hotel. I showered, shaved, wrote the first half of this report, and then started to go downstairs to have dinner. Johnny Dollar. Roseman, Johnny. You got something interesting on the post case. Oh, good. Somebody pawned that cloth coat late this afternoon. You know who it was? No, I'm just on my way down to the pawn shop to get a description from the pawnbroker. You want to meet me? Where is it? 945 East 185th Street. I'll see you there. I climbed back into my car and drove uptown to the pawn shop. Lieutenant Roseman was already there talking to the pawnbroker. And the answers he was getting were very interesting. You remember the man who pawned the coat? Well, yes, he was a kind of small, funny-looking fella. He didn't say much, just handed me the coat and took what I gave him. You know, I remember the circular, what you sent. Seems strange, a man like that having such a nice coat. I thought right away that was stolen. Uh, the man was small? Yeah, kind of stooped over. Anything else? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had a habit of zinging to himself all the time, under his breath. <laughs> First good lead. Roseman and I drove back to Mrs. Post's apartment and went down in the basement, where we found Pete Kellett asleep on an old cut. Hey, Pete. 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 Come on, wake up. Oh, what do you want? You remember me? Should I? I was down here this afternoon. Oh, I guess I do. You remember Lieutenant Roseman? Uh, is he with you? Yeah, come on, Pete. We're going down to the station. Now? Yeah. You uh, pawned a coat late this afternoon. Huh? A cloth coat. Uh, the one that was stolen from number eight. You pawned it. I don't know nothing about no coat. Let's go, Pete. Uh, right now? Right now. Uh, okay, but I ain't had much sleep. That plumbing that keeps a man awake all night. Uh, just let me get my shoes. Yeah. I got shoes, and you got shoes. Oh, God's children got shoes. We took Pete Keller down to the precinct and questioned him for half an hour. 
but he refused to admit that he'd ever pawned the coat or that he knew anything about it. The pawnbroker was sent for, and we all went down to the lineup for an identification. Pete Kellett was in the first line, third man. Number three, murder. Number three, step up. Number three, you. Uh, You're number three, aren't you? Well, if you'd like me to be. Uh... Then step out. Oh, sure. Is this okay? Just answer the questions. You mind if I sit down? Just stand right there and face the front, hands at your sides. I'm awful tired. The plumbing keeps me awake all night. What's your name? Uh, I said, what's your name? Lieutenant. Oh, it's yeah. Pete. That's the man. Uh, Pete he Kellett? is the where one that from? pawned the coat. Oh, what do you mean? You sure? I mean, oh, where's your place of residence? Okay. Oh. Sergeant Hanley. Yes, Lieutenant. Number three, hold for interrogation. Okay, you step back in line. Me? Yeah, you. Oh, I thought you wanted to hear where I was. Step coming. back. My goodness. <laughs> We had a positive identification. The pawnbroker had pointed out Pete Kellett as the man who'd pawned the coat. We took the little janitor down to the interrogation room and worked on him for five long hours. But he didn't crack. Pete. Why don't you save us all a lot of trouble and admit it? What? Bet you killed Mrs. Post. Oh, why should I admit that? You want me to tell the truth, don't you? Oh. Pete. <laughs> Yes. You did pawn the coat, didn't you? Yes. Okay. Where did you get it? Uh, from Mrs. Post. And you stabbed her? No. Then how did you get it? Well, she'd give it to you me. You expect us to believe Why, that? Why, sure. Why didn't you tell us this in the first place? Well, I thought if you knew, you'd think just what you're thinking. She gave you the coat? Uh, yes. When? Well, a couple of days ago. You told me you didn't like her. I didn't. She gave you a nice coat like that, but you didn't like her? No. Then why did you take it? Why not? Now, look, you... Lieutenant. Yeah? Come here, man, will you? Can I go... You move a muscle and I'll bust you. Oh. I tell you, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, I know. But after all, he's... He's nuts. There's a more polite term for it. He's nuts and he's guilty. You want to find out if he is? I know. I mean guilty. Guilty. Find out and eliminate all this questioning? How? He's scared of that room. He wouldn't take me up to number eight, although he gave me the key. I think we can scare him into a confession. I'll try anything. Of course, there's a chance he's telling the truth. If he is, I'll eat your shoulder holster. Well, turn him loose. Send him back to his job. What's that going to do? You just hang around and watch. Roseman agreed to continue questioning Kellett for another half hour while I got things ready, then release him and take him back to the Park Avenue apartment. I left the precinct and drove to Jane Hughes' residence on West 61st Street. Oh, you'd better leave. Look, this is very important. Who is it? It's me, and I'm coming in. A dollar, you listen to me. No, you listen. I don't like you, Mr. Post, but I've got a chance to clear up this mess and get back to Hartford, so I'll be far enough away to keep from belting you in the teeth. Now... We think we know who killed your wife. Well, who is it? The janitor of the building. Old Kellett? That's right, but we've got to prove it. I'll need your permission and Miss Hughes' help. I can't let Miss Hughes get involved in anything that might in okay, any way... Okay, okay, I'll see you later. Wait a minute, Johnny. What do you want me to do? Jane. It's all right. It's important to me. This hasn't been the most pleasant situation, Johnny, but regardless of what anyone thinks, I'm going to marry Bill. We're in love. I'll send you a box of rice if this works. What do you want me to do? I want you to be Mrs. Post. The dead Mrs. Post. What? Let him finish. I want you to go up in that apartment, dress like Mrs. Post, and call Kellett, the janitor. Tell him there's something wrong with the plumbing. Play it straight, as though nothing had ever happened. Are you out of your mind? You think... The police will be there. No. Let's go, Johnny. I drove Jane Hughes to the apartment where Roseman was waiting. She got dressed in one of Mrs. Post's nightgowns and a robe... Then buzz the basement. Well, what about my voice? Just keep it low. Hello. Hello? Pete? Who is this? Mrs. Post. Hey, what? what? There's something the matter with the plumbing. Will you come up and fix it? Pete? Did you hear me? Hey, yes. Will you come right up? Yes. <laughs> Here's 
Here he comes. Come in, Pete. Uh -uh. What's the matter? You're dead. No, I'm not. Come in. And didn't I kill you? No, I'm all right. No, no, no. Something's wrong. No, you're dead. Stop being silly. Come in here. Well, if he ain't dead, if I didn't kill you the first time, I'd better do it now. Don't move, Pete. Yeah, well, Snap what? on the lights, Miss Hughes. Put down that knife, Pete. Is it all right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you ain't Mrs. Post. No. Well, then she is dead. I did kill her. That's right, Pete. Oh, I feel better. Pete had the jewels hidden in a bucket of paint in the basement. He finally explained that he was in the process of robbing Mrs. Post when she came home, surprised him, and he had to kill her. He didn't take the minx because he thought the cloth coat was prettier. I drove Jane Hughes back to her apartment, where a grateful William Post was waiting with open arms. And that was that. Expense account item two, $15.85 for a late dinner for Lieutenant Roseman and me, after which I retired to my hotel bed and slept for about 10 hours. Expense account items three and four, $35.75, hotel bill and car rental. Item five, $16.55, train fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $87.05. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, for refreshing taste plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The taste of fresh spearmint is cooling and delightful, and there's lots of it in every stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. It freshens your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and sweetens your breath besides. You'll enjoy the good chewing, too, because Wrigley's Spearmint is so smooth and pleasant to chew on. There's nothing else quite like it. Next time you're at the store, stop at your friendly merchant's display of chewing gum and get a few packages of good-tasting Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Always keep some handy for refreshing taste plus chewing enjoyment. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. <laughs> Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Jack Moyles, William Johnstone, Benny Rubin, Charles Davis, Mary Jane Croft, High Everback, and Howard McNear. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at the same time when from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network.